One thing I wanted to talk about too, Dick, a uh, good friend of, of ours, Doug Yeomans and, and Michael Hund, are starting this uh, with Music Exchange. We're going to start this thing called Music Exchange Rock School. So if you are a player at any age or at any level, you've wanted to play in a band, you get a hold of us at the store, either call us 646-6240 or just email me, rich at richesmusicexchange.com. We'll get you signed up. We're going to break them down into bands, teach them how to be a band. There's going to be five in class instructions, five different classes, and then a performance at the end. You don't need any stage line gear. It's all there for you. Uh, everything that you need to get rolling is going to be there, and it's going to be a lot of fun. That's going to be really cool. I saw Doug last night, and he was awfully excited about it. Yeah. So. He's, Everyone's excited about it. Yeah. The kids are coming in and asking about it. Everyone loves yeah, it. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Excellent. And this actually is the perfect segue because without any further ado, I've got to introduce somebody very, very special to, to not only the, the music community, but really the entertainment community as a whole. I am so happy to be sitting next to Donnie Tomasulo, who's also my mentor here at Entercom. But leaving that stuff we do 9 to 5 out of the equation because we're here to have fun. <laughs> Uh, we have fun every day. We have fun every day, yes we do. Anyways, Donnie really began his, his career locally in a band called Ben Hatzel, which was really, really good in the early 70s. Uh, we like to tease each other back when we both had hair. All right. And also he played with the Alan Sims Group, another band that was very, very popular back in the day. And then from there he kind of segued into the big time uh, concert business. So he did a lot of stuff with Festival East. Those of us... Those of us old enough to remember every major concert that ever came through Buffalo back in the golden days of every concerts, one of them, yeah. every one of them went through Festival East, and Donnie was involved in, in every one of those. So I'm sure he's got some great stories he can share with us a little bit later. Uh, Donnie took all that experience, and for the past 20 years, uh, he's been an executive in the radio industry, uh, first with Mercury Communications. Uh, can we mention the other? Should I mention Sure. It? All right. Uh, with 97 Rock, <clears throat> 103 The Edge, and currently... Donnie has been here at Entercom for about the past five or six years. He is the director of results here at Entercom Radio. My mentor and somebody that I'm really proud to know who's helped me a lot and guided my career. So, Donnie, oh, here that, we are. Welcome. That was the Welcome biggest the intro. Did you tell that to my wife? That was the biggest intro I've ever heard. Right? <laughs> well, give him some money. Man. I'm still buying it. After the wow. the I got tips. Right. Good night. Thank you Let's very much. Let's talk about the Ben Hansel days. Let's Because one of the things that we, me and Mick wanted to do a show on, uh, and we, this could, part of it, this could be, is the Buffalo of old. Um, I remember Ben Hatzel, I think, from the Bayview Beach Club. Is that right? Yeah, we played out the Bayview. You know, we started like everybody else, playing uh, 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 Joe T. Rose's place there at McVans, you know, oh, which, yeah. uh, with everybody in the, the bees who were at Crossroads at the time. And, you know, all the bands that were playing around there, like Talis, and, and Weekend was in its end days, and uh, Bucks, and Cheeks, and there was just such a great scene. You could play five nights a week. They were talking about playing five nights. We used to do it all the time. Right, right, right. You know, and there was just so many places to get your chops together. It was just a great time, you know? What do you attribute that to? Is Economically, was it a better time, or was it just there, creatively there was a better thing I call, going? It, I call it the drinking age. I agree with once you 100%. They, once they raised the drinking age to 21, who's going to go out? You know, right. you're, it was an art form to get into bands or to bars around here. We all started going out when we were 15. Right. You you know, we all had fake proof, and you started going out from the time you were 15 to 25. Once well, again, we don't endorse fake proof. No, no, we don't endorse fake <laughs> or, or drinking and driving, even though it was an art form. But I, I just think there were so many great bands, and then Tales would do something, and they'd raise the bar, you know, so the next band would come out, or Hard Times with Dick's band, and this, you know, and, and everybody just kept pushing each other. It's like the chefs in New Orleans, you know, raising the bar. And once that music scene fell apart... So the drinking know, age, though, is what you think. As, as soon as customers boom. had to drop off because of the age. I remember stage one, you know, talking about the old, old-time place. So after Harvey and Quirky sold to my buddy Frank Sardina, and it was booming, you know. And then they raised the drinking age, and it was like literally shut off a switch and just went click. And one by one, you started seeing all the... Because who's going out? You know? I'll, I'll attest to that, too, because I, I'm 21, and since I've turned 21, I've seen so many more local bands than before. You know, I used to have to wait till they were at other point. Go to a yeah. show. You, yeah. show. you can't go to a show unless you're 21 now. <laughs> Since I've turned 21, I've seen a handful of bands. Well, you know, I played my first bar gig, and I'm serious, in 1967, I played my first bar gig. I was 15 years old, playing oh, at the man. old barn in East Aurora. And, and like Donnie was saying, ba back in the day when, when music was thriving, I mean, you'd pick up uh, the Buffalo News, there'd be five pages of who was playing where. Right. And from a musician standpoint, it was great. Mick, you'll appreciate this. These were week-long gigs. You'd play one place for five, Thank you'd you. play six I'll days, going there. seven days. So you could, we actually could hire roadies because they only had to come in one time to set you up. 
They then come in the last night to tear you down, and most of these clubs is a lost leader would usually have a dying beer night, like on a Tuesday or a Wednesday night, like yeah. the Crossbow or Keystone yeah. 90s, and it was thriving, I think is the best word. He I and Cheese Stupid Tuesday when I was in college, used to go see Cock Robin all the time. It was a riot. You know, yeah. They went and hung out, and then all the bands got to know each other, who'd go see right. who on their off night, and we'd go see Talos on Monday night to see what was cooking, and then you try to raise the bar, hey, let's do that one. And then everybody was recording while well, Talos was recording. we got to do this, and you kept just trying to raise the bar. The competition it was a, it was like a renaissance. Of, of, at that time, it was a perfect, perfect storm for Buffalo. Mm. I can't tell you how many times a week I feel like such a chump when I'm like wrapping up my own cables and someone's coming up to buy a CD at the same time. Yeah. I really, <laughs> I really think club. eventually we should get back to. And I talked to the, um, the folks over at the Shadow Lounge about this because you know, every once in a while they'll, they'll let a band set up for the whole weekend. It's like you know, if, if the band's there on Friday night and the band's really gelling. Then someone will go Saturday and tell somebody, hey, you know what, they're playing tonight too if you want to go check them out. I miss not having a band for two nights or every set night because you can't make it all. We're all busy. Right. But if I know you're there Friday or Saturday or if you're there every Tuesday or every Wednesday, you can kind of, you'll, you'll, but it's just the scene changed. You know? I think it helps too if you, if you have a band like that either, either is a house band or like you say on a set night a week, the band gets a relationship with the the folks that are coming in with the club owner with I mean it's just it's just a better way to do business instead of this one night stand thing everywhere where you're, you you go in and you feel like a stranger every night of the week the world has changed Melody Fair is gone it's just the world has changed you know it's, it's one of the reasons why I put Talos back together I brought in some old stuff with me and I'm sitting here and Mick had just talked to uh, Billy Sheen not too long ago but uh, uh, back in the uh, late 97 I was still at 97 Rock and I just, I missed seeing those bands, you know, so I was still friends with Billy and Paul and Dave, and at that time, I don't even think they were all talking to each other. Yeah, probably not. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, Billy came in for one of uh, the, uh, well, what was the uh, jazz band, is it Niacin? Niacin, yeah, we were doing Niacin at uh, Impacts. And, uh, no, I, and we were doing the first wing stop. Another thing I invented before uh, Drew stole my chicken wing idea. Um, <laughs> and so we were, so Billy was there, and we were drinking at the executive, and so I took Billy to the bar at, uh, at, uh, um, Again, going brain dead, can't think of the name, but there's, all these things change. So we're drinking a bottle of wine, I'm like, dude, the Eagles are back together. This band, if you don't get together now, nobody's going to care. And so I got those guys talking, talked to Mike Failey out on the, on the West Coast. They were talking to each other. All right, let's do a gig. Then I have to come up, where are we going to do them? Shays was being remodeled. So my buddy Mike Sowitz was working at Klein Hands at the time. I was like, let's do them at Klein Hands. Uh, and they're like, well, you can't do a rock band. Tell them it's a classic band, you know? And then, uh, so, you know, those guys wanted their down payment, like 10 grand or whatever. It's, sure, I'll, I'll pay it 10 grand. And client hands wanted their down payment. Sure, I have no money. We're doing this on spec, you know? Then we make it seem like it's a station gig. And before you know it, we had the gig because we just, Buffalo wanted to see Talos because there were so many great bands. And that was like one of the coolest things uh, we ever pulled off. And they came out and they were fantastic. Yeah that, yeah, that was great. People still talk about those days. I, I was just listening to the CD today, just getting pumped for you guys. Yeah. I, forgot, I hadn't listened to it in so many years, and it was awesome. Hey, you know, I, you know, I wanted to ask you, you know, we, we talked about how the local music landscape has changed. I mean, back, back in, when, you know, when you were involved in the concert thing, I mean, that was the golden age of concerts, and it was the age of excess, I think, because a lot of these bands are Thank making God. a lot of money touring. What I wanted to ask you, uh, you know, the, the big story that everybody used to tease about was like when Van Halen would come to town, you know, they couldn't have certain colored jelly beans in the back room. What were some of the ridiculous rider clauses? that you've seen in your days doing concerts. The, the funniest one that I remember was uh, Billy Squire. And I always got along great with those guys. Uh, I spent a lot of time with his drummer, Bobby Chouinard, uh, who was a great guy. Had, had, had some habit problems, which killed him. But he was a great guy. Um, and he would put some fine print in. And I forget what it exactly was. I think it was highest in oil. And our caterer, Monty, was nuts. Look, what the hell is highest in oil? It turns out, he finally found it. It was a joke. When the Three Stooges, you know, when Curly would go, boo, 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 they would go, get the highest in oil. It would splash it on him and stop him from going crazy. It was just to see if someone was reading the rider. Yeah. meant nothing, you know, but we found it. But people would ask for certain bottles of wine or certain things or tons of stuff that you know they weren't going to consume. And you'd just watch it going out the back door onto the bus, you know. So that was, that was always interesting. The age of excess. The uh, age of excess. And it was always funny that uh, the English bands were really weird. I remember, yes. Everybody had to have their own dressing room, you know, because I don't think they were talking to each other. And uh, and John Anderson had to have a teepee because he was like so, you know. So you're trying to find rooms for everybody back there because the old odd was so small. And I remember we had to put uh, uh, Chris Squire in like a little room. It was literally a closet. You had to set a teepee up in yeah, the dressing room? Yeah, he, he, had, he had his teepee going. Everybody had their own room before they came together. And here's Chris Squire, one of the great bass players. He's, he's in a room, but it had to be, it was his own room. Welcome to the old odd, you know. On that note, we're gonna go. To, we're gonna take a short commercial break. Are we playing into it with some talus? Uh, or some Ben Hansel? Ben Hansel. This is a little ASG. This can't keep a good band down. Well, Alan Sims group. Huh? 
Howdy out to Peter Gallus, who's listening out there in little ASG. 803-1520 on the other side of the break. We're going to hear more stories from Donnie Thomas, who will stick around, folks.